Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, we're we, in the last class. We were talking about the Haranma Yena Patrena and the Satya Syapi Tamukam. Do you remember what is this Haranmaya? Any... The Brahma Jyoti Maharaj? Yes, the Brahma Jyoti. And can you describe the Brahma Jyoti to me? The effulgence of the Lord, the outer effulgence of the Lord Maharaj. Okay. What kind of effulgence is it? Uh, the Brahma Jyoti is a uh, spiritual fulgence. It's only in the spiritual world? Is it only in the spiritual world or not? Uh, well, Maharaj, uh... I'm not so sure, what I, I think it's in the spiritual world. It's the material world, I think. The impersonal Brahman, right? Yeah, the impersonal Brahman, right. Yeah. This material world is also manifested from the impersonal Brahman. So the, this, Bra, this impersonal Brahman is everywhere. And so the material world is also manifested from that impersonal Brahman feature. So there are three phases of the Absolute Truth, right? Do you know? Three phases of the Absolute Truth, Rukmini Pati yes. Prabhu? Yeah? What yes, are... Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah? The, the, the Brahman Realization. Yeah. Uh, and then the Paramatma Realization. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bhagavan Realization, Maharaj. Okay. So, what, what kind of people worship the Brahman? Uh, the Nyanis, uh, 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 the Nyanis uh, worship the Brahman uh, uh, realization and the, and the yogis are uh, 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 followers of the uh, Paramatma realization mm -hmm. and the devotees of the Lord are in the Bhagavan realization, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Gyanis and the Mayavadis, also the, the Vedantists, those people who are fond of Vedanta, they like the, they're attracted by the Brahman, particularly if they're Advaitavadis, Advaitis, Advaitis, right? There's, there's two schools of philosophy, one is called Advaita and the other is Dvaita. So what school are we? We are in Dwaita, Maharaj. Are we? Huh? Abeda, Abeda, uh, Abeda, 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 uh, Abeda, philosophy. And uh, we are in the Dwaita, uh, Dwaita, really. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya's philosophy is Achintya Bed Abeda Tattva, inconceivably, simultaneously one and different. So Shankaracharya, the followers of Shankaracharya, the Advaitavadis, they worship, they they like the Brahman. Although Shankaracharya also said Narayana Paravyaktat, Shankaracharya also spoke about Bhaji Govinda, Bhaji Govinda, worship Govinda, but still the followers of Shankaracharya, they just pay attention to the Brahman. And when Krishna comes into this world, how do they explain Krishna? How do the Advaitavadis explain Krishna when he appears in the world? They said Krishna and the Jivas are all same. Krishna and the Devas are all same. Where do they, where do, where do they come from? Do they come from the spiritual world? 
according to the advice uh, uh, according to the uh, uh, mayavadi philosophers uh, bhagwan uh, his 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 they recognize him only as a brahma jyoti who has got no form yeah when krishna comes they say he came from the brahman they say ultimately the brahman is the supreme so they don't believe in any spiritual world the the mayavadis they don't accept that there's spiritual planets in the spiritual world they say there's only the brahman there's only the oneness of the brahman without any variety without any uh, activity so they, they they only give they only recognize the brahman they don't they don't agree that they're vaikuntha planets they don't agree in that they just say no it's only the brahman the only the light this is their understanding so the dvaita bodies they're they're like that they only think of the oneness so their, medit their, their goal, what is their goal? What is their perfection for them? For the Merging into the Brahma Jyoti. Yeah, in, liberation, right? Liberation, impersonal liberation. That is called Sayujya Mukti, merging. So does a devotee also accept that kind of liberation? Will a devotee accept no, no, that? No, no Maharaj, no Maharaj. Why? We believe in the personality of God, eh? He has a form and there's a plan and there's a spiritual world, the Goloka Vrindavan and we, we accept that Maharaj. Well, why won't we go in the Brahma Jyoti? Brahma Jyoti, is, I, Brahma Jyoti is also beyond the material world. Because we, we want to serve the Lord Maharaj, we want to serve the Lord with love. So can you not serve him in the Brahma Jyoti? No, no, but <laughs> I think that the we Lord. We want to see the Lord. Oh, you want to see the Lord? You don't want to serve him? Huh? Yeah, devotee doesn't want impersonal liberation because there's no opportunity for devotional service. Devotional service is higher than seeing the Lord. A devotee doesn't just desire to see the Lord, a devotee wants service to the Lord. Service is, is more important than just seeing the Lord. We want to do service, that's the important thing for a devotee, devotional service. So we think like that. Of course, in this prayer, in the prayer which was offered here in the Ishopanishad, the, the devotee is praying that, please remove your effulgence, right? Haranmayena patrena. Patrena, I mean the covering, the haranmaya, the, 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 your, your, this effulgence is covering you. And so some people, they're attracted to that light, the jnanis, those people who are not so enlightened, who don't know about the different forms of the Absolute. They don't know, they, some of them they just don't believe that there can be a God. They don't believe God could be a person. So they think, God, there's only light, there's only energy. So they just think like that. But this prayer in the Ishopanishad is making it clear that God is not only just light, that the light comes from a source, it comes from somewhere. Just like we have light, where the light comes from the sun, right? So the light, it's not just light coming from nowhere, it comes from the sun planet. When the sun goes down, then there's no light anymore. And the same way the light in your house, in your home, it comes from the power station. You have to go to the power station, there's a source. The light has a source. So the same way the devotee is praying that please remove that light. I want a satyashya pitam mukam. Mukam means a face, a mukha. I want to see your face. Right? But it, it's, it's not that a devotee just wants to see the face. 
just to see the face of the Lord. A devotee wants service. Service is more important than just seeing the face. Now, it's very nice to see the Lord's face. Very nice. We could see it. Remember it. But what is important is to do service. Right? So we, Satyasya Pihitam Mukam. I want to see your face. So the Absolute Truth, three features, Punita, right? Punita. Do you remember? What, how can you relate the three features, the Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan? Can you give an example describing the relationship between them? Um, the Brahman is like the sun rays or the sunshine of the sun. Mm -hmm. And the Paramatma can be related to the sun itself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sun itself. And Bhagavan is the, the sun god. It's like the, the presiding deity, like the sun god. Okay, yeah, different ways to understand, right? Maharaj, I have a question. Yes. This is a prayer to the Lord, right? Yes. So it's mentioned as who is actually praying or who's actually um, praying in this case? Is there a particular devotee that's praying or is it just a general prayer? Well, the, whoever wrote this... Uh, the, the, the author of these particular Upanishad, I think it was one of the Manus who, who wrote this particular Upanishad. And the devotee who wrote this, he, then he... he but, the, but the point was that in the beginning they were talking about the Lord more in an impersonal way. We were hearing how he walks and he does not walk and he's far away, he's near as well. But this is more the impersonal aspect. But now we're coming to the end and we're talking more, we're hearing more about the personal feature. So sometimes you have to do like that. You know, the Upanishads were described as the first, the first step in self-realization. So some people taking the first step, it's too much for them to show them the deities, they're not ready to see the deity, to see the actual form of the Lord in the temple. They don't have that kind of piety. They need to hear about the Lord in the impersonal feature, by His energy. And we understand the Lord, how He has inconceivable energies, right? He has inconceivable energies. And now, because coming to the end of the Upanishad, so the, the, it's mentioning about how he also, he's a person and he has a form, features. And the devotee is aspiring to see these features. He's not satisfied just to only to see the light, but he wants to go through the light, to come to the real form of the Lord. So the prayer, yes, it's a prayer. So it's a prayer, who, the prayer means we're praying, we're praying to someone. We're not just praying to some energy or praying to some light. But we're, we, have, we, we offer prayers to a person. There's a person there who hears us. When we pray, that personality can hear our prayers. So these prayers are written by one of the Manus, a long time ago, because it's, we said it's part of the Vedas, right? The Upanishads, they come from the Vedas. So they're called Shruti, Shruti Mantras. Shruti Mantras. The Bhagavad Gita is not Shruti. Bhagavad Gita is Smriti. But this, Ved, this Upanishad is from the Vedas. It's from the Yajur Veda. And there are other Upanishads, there, there are 108 Upanishads. Of the 108, 11 of them were more important and 11 of them were commented on by Shankaracharya. But Srila Prabhupada, he just commented on this one Upanishad, the Isha Upanishad. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Any other questions? No? 
Okay, we'll go ahead. Okay, Panita, would you like to chant this one for us? Can you chant? Mantra? Yeah. Who's that? Ekarshe Yama Surya Prajapatya. Pusan Nikarsya Yamasurya Prajapatya Vuharasmina Samuha Samuha Vayuharasmina Samuha Tejo Yate Rupam Kalyana Taman Tejo Yate Rupam Kalyan Taman Tate Pasyami Yosa Sao Purusha Soham Asmi. Tate Pasyam Yosa Okay, translation. O oh my Lord, O oh primeval philosopher, maintainer of the universe, O oh regulating principle, destination of the pure devotees, well user of the progenitors of mankind. Please remove the effulgence of your transcendental rays so that I can see your form of bliss. You are the eternal supreme personality of God, like unto the sun is empire. So you can see how this verse, this mantra is continuing from the previous one. In the previous one, they were praying, Kindly remove your dazzling effulgence and exhibit your form to your pure devotee, right? And so I, the, the devotee is continuing to, continue, continuing to offer prayers to the Lord. Praising the Lord first of all. Oh my Lord, oh primeval philosopher, maintainer of the universe. O oh, regulating principle, destination of the pure devotees, well-wisher of the progenitors of mankind. All of this, these are all glorifications of the Lord, right? We want to offer prayers to the Lord. When we approach the Lord, this is the system that the devotee is approaching the Lord and he has a request. Of course, he's making the request in the second half of the verse. He said, I want to see your form of bliss. And so here's a request. So in order to get the request, first of all, there should be some glorification of the Lord because approaching the Lord is very special and we should know how to offer prayers to the Lord. So you will see in Srimad Bhagavatam, even in Bhagavad Gita, you see Arjuna offering prayers to Krishna. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many prayers. So praying is one of the nine kinds of devotional service. So we see here also the devotee praying to the Lord. Okay, go ahead, Punita. The sun and its rays are one and the same qualitative, 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 qualitatively. Similarly, the Lord and the living entities are one and the same in quality. The sun is one, but the molecules of the sun's rays are innumerable. The sun's rays constitute part of the sun, and the sun and its ray conjointly constitute the complete sun. Within the sun itself resides the sun god, and similarly, within the supreme spiritual planet, Goloka Vrindavana, from which the Brahma Jyoti effulgence is emanating, the Lord enjoys his eternal pastimes as verified in the Brahma Samhita. Chintamani Prakara Satmasu Kalpa Virsha Lakshavartasu Surabir Abhipala Yantam Lakshmi Shahasha Sata Sam Brahma Sivyamanam Sivyamanam Govindam Adipurusham Tammaham Bajami. I worship Govinda, the primal, primeval Lord, the first progenitor, who's tending the cows, 
fulfilling all desires in a boat filled with spiritual gems and surrounded by millions of wish fulfilling trees. He is always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds of thousands of Lakshmis or goddesses of fortune. Okay, so Prabhupada is taking up this point because at the end of the prayer, the devotee has said, you are the eternal supreme personality of Godhead, like unto the sun as am I. So the devotee had compared himself, he said, the Lord is like the sun and he said, I am, I am also like that. Not that the devotee is the sun, but we're like the rays of the sun. Prabhupada explained, the rays of the sun and the sun are the same in quality, but very different in quantity. So we have that kind of relationship with the Lord. Previously we gave the example, do you remember Sunita, uh, Punita Maharaji, what other examples did we give about quality, one in quality, different in quantity? Um, the God is like the ocean. Mm -hmm. And the living entities I like a drop of water from okay. the ocean. Right. Or the gold mine and the speck, the little bit of gold dust. <laughs> the gold dust. So within the sun, there's a sun god, and similarly, within the spiritual sky, there is Goloka Vrindavan. Now, Many, not everyone knows about Goloka Vrindavan. Some people they know about the Brahman. Some other people they know about Vaikuntha, right? Some Vaishnavas, like maybe other Sampradayas, like the Sri Vaishnavas, they talk about the Vaikuntha. They don't talk about Goloka, they will talk about just Vaikunthas. But about, we say about, there's a very special planet in the spiritual sky, above even Vaikuntha, and that is Goloka Vrindavan. And it's from there that the Brahma Jyoti is coming. And it's there that the Lord is enjoying his pastimes. And then Prabhupada quotes this famous verse from the Brahma Samhita, describing the Lord. What, what is the Lord doing? What's his activity? How does he enjoy himself, Punita? He's uh, enjoying with the gopas and the gopis, um, with, his, with his father and mother, Mother Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj and all. And who else? And his devotee, um, the, the all the just all, all the religion. cows, all the cows. <laughs> He's engaged in tending the cows, right? The cows are very important. We offer respects to Krishna. We say Namo Brahmanya Deva. This verse, have you heard it before? Yes, no. Maharaj. Can you quote it? Namo Brahmana Devaya. Sorry. Uh, no, I don't. Think. Namo Brahmana Devaya. Go Brahmanya. Go Brahmanya Hitaya Cha. Go Brahmana Hitaya. Jagatita. Jagatita. Go. Jagatita. Go. Jagatita Krishnaya. Go Vinda Namo Nama. Do you know the meaning? Not the exact meaning. No? What's it roughly then? What's it saying? Anybody know? Sakiras, do you know Mataji? Sakiras Mataji? No? Anyway, it means that. Sorry. Yes, who's this? Sakiras? Yes, not very sure. You're not very sure? Okay, anyway, the meaning is 
that uh, Krishna is very, very dear to Krishna are the cows and the Brahmin. They're two very important to Krishna, the cows and the Brahmanas. So Krishna always takes these these things for the, the Brahmin. He has his Krishna has a Brahmana friend, Madhu Mangal. And Krishna has many cows. You know? Do you know how many cows Krishna's father had? How many? Nine lakh. Yeah, nine lakh, nine hundred right. Thousand. Nine hundred thousand. A lot of cows, you know. <laughs> Wonderful. So Krishna, and Krishna loves the cows very much. He likes to be with the cows. So every day he'll go with the cows to the forest. So Krishna is engaged in tending the cows, but the Krishna's cows are very special cows. What kind of cows are they? Surabi cows. Yeah, they're surabi cows. And what about the trees? Kalpa briksha trees, right. And all the gopis, who are the gopis? Srimati Radharani. Hmm? Srimati Radharani. Yeah, Srimati Radharani is a gopi. Yeah. Right? They're all like goddesses of fortune. But actually they're more than goddesses of fortune because the gopi's position is even higher than the goddess of fortune. Okay? And the dust, all the dust in Vrindavan is Chintamani. So Vrindavan, very special place. So Krishna is very fond of Vrindavan. He's tending the cows, about, the boards are all built with, the houses are all built with Chintamani, which is special stone which can fulfill all desires. And the trees are all Kalpabriksha, and the cows are all Kamadenu cows, giving everything. But the people of Vrindavan are so satisfied, they love Krishna so much, they don't desire anything. They have no material desires. They simply want some flour and some fruits to offer to Krishna and they get some milk and they'll cook the milk and offer to Krishna and that, that's their happiness. They could have anything they wanted but they're happy. They just want to offer the milk and the flowers and fruits for the pleasure of Krishna. Okay, go ahead. So, next. Who's going to... Who is it? What's your name? Who is it? What's your name? Hare Krishna. Who wants to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Y yes. Who wants to read? Somebody was saying they wanted to read? Yes, Kesava Damodara Das Prabhu, oh. uh, Maharaj. Okay, go ahead Prabhu. The Brahma Jodi is described in the Brahmana, Brahma Samhita as the rays emanating from that supreme spiritual planet, Golaka Vandavana, just as the sun's rays emanate from the sun globe. Until one surpasses, surpasses the glare of the Brahma Jodi, one cannot receive information of the land of the Lord. The impersonalist philosophers, blinded as they are by the dazzling Brahma Jodi, can realize neither the factual abode of the Lord nor his transcendental form. Limited by their poor fun of knowledge, such impersonalist thinkers cannot understand the all blissful transcendental form of Lord Krishna. In this prayer, therefore, three Isopinisad petitions that the Lord to remove the effulgent rays of the Brahma Jodi so that 
the poor devotee can see his all blissful transcendental form. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're hearing. We want to see the form of the Lord. We have to go through that effulgence. We have to go through that light. So the impersonalists, they are, they're blinded by that light. So they never they never get there. They never find their way to the to to the Vaikuntha planets or to Goloka Vrindavan. They never see the form of the Lord. All they see is the light. One time the devotees were chanting, they were doing japa, and then one one lady was chanting and she said to Prabhupada, she said, Prabhupada, she said, Oh Swamiji, when I chant I see a bright light. Prabhupada told her, keep chanting, it will go away. <laughs> He told her, keep chanting, it. don't worry about it, it will go away. It's not very important for us. So we're not interested in that light because that light is just simply the impersonal feature of the Lord. So the Lord has both features, He's both personal and impersonal. A one who, if we know, if we know the personal feature, then we will also know about the impersonal. So we have to, we, we give our concentration on the personal feature. We shouldn't be attracted just by the light. These people, they don't have complete knowledge. Remember we give the example about the man massaging the elephant, the blind man massaging the elephant. And one man is massaging the leg of the elephant and he's, they asked him, what is it like? He said, it's like a tree. <laughs> so he's describing the leg but not the whole elephant. You have to put all the parts together. So we want to understand the Absolute Truth, we want to understand the, all the features, the Brahman, the Paramatma, Bhagavan. So if we understand the Bhagavan feature, then we will also understand about Brahman and Paramatma as well. We give the example, just like if you have one hundred dollars, then you also have fifty dollars, you also have ten dollars, it's all included within one hundred dollars. So we want to see the all blissful transcendental form of the Lord, that's important. Don't be put off just by some light. <laughs> Go ahead, somebody else who would like to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I would like to read Maharaj. Who, is you? who are you? What's your name Prabhu? Uh, my name is Krishna Prema Pratayaka Das Maharaj. Oh, really? Yes Maharaj. Okay, go ahead. Okay. By realizing the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, one experiences the auspicious aspect of the Supreme. And by realizing the Paramatma or all-pervading feature of the Supreme, one experiences an even more auspicious enlightenment. But by meeting the personality of God in Himself face to face, the devotee experiences the most auspicious feature of the Supreme. Since He is addressed as the primeval philosopher and the maintainer and the well-wisher of the universe, the Supreme Truth cannot be impersonal. This is the Vedic of Sri Uiso Upanishad. The word whose son Maintainer is especially significant for although the Lord maintains all living beings, He specifically maintains His devotees. After surpassing the impersonal Brahma Jyoti and seeing the personal aspect of the Lord and His most auspicious eternal form, the devotee realizes the Absolute Truth in full. Okay, so maybe you can explain to us why the Lord cannot be impersonal. Uh, the Lord cannot be impersonal. The Lord cannot be impersonal because uh, he, he especially because he maintained all the living beings. Yeah, how how does he maintain them? How he maintained them? 
How do you know he's a maintainer then? How do you know he's a maintainer? How do we know he's a maintainer? Uh, by experiencing. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Because he is in every living being as Paramatma. Mm, yes, Paramatma is in within every. But yeah, is, does that mean he's maintaining everyone? But just because he's within every, he's he's also in the atom, right? He's 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 not only within every living being. He's in everything. He's all pervading. Right. Mm. He's all, he's a man, so he maintains everyone because he provides because. It, everything is coming from him. He provides for everyone. He provides the needs of everyone. All living entities, they're all maintained. The elephant, every day elephant has to eat many kilos. And the tiny insects, like the little ants, they have to get a grain of sugar. Who is providing for them all? It's all coming from the one Supreme Lord. He, everything comes from Him. Right? So He's providing for everyone. And He is described also the primeval philosopher. He's the original, the first ph the philosopher. <laughs> he speaks the Vedas, He gives the Vedic knowledge to Brahma and He's speaks again and again the Bhagavad Gita for the benefit of people. So he's the original philosopher, he's a maintain he's a well wisher of the universe. So what, what what he's a well wisher of the universe. What is in what way is he wishing is the what in what way is he well wishing the people of the universe? Because what? we they're all part and parcel of him, Maharaj. Yeah. And so he's definitely the well wisher of all of us. What's his desire then? He's a well wisher. He wishes us to do what? He wishes us that we can go back to him, Maharaj. Right, yeah, he wants so us to go back to Godhead, right? Go back home. Right. He wants us to go back to him. So the Lord maintains everyone, Prabhupada said, but he has a special relationship for his devotees. Why? Is that is that fair? That he's a, he has a spe, he gives he 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 gives he specifically maintains his devotees. He gives special attention to his devotees. Is that fair? Yes, Maharaj. Why? It is. Because just like, for example, like the father has got two or three children, and all the children are not, uh, like one of the children would take special care for the father, although he sees everyone as his children, but he takes special care for the child who loves him the most. I feel that's the way. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> Father, li Father likes to be loved by the child. <laughs> okay, so after surpassing impersonal Brahma Jyoti, seeing the personal aspect of the Lord, most and his most auspicious eternal form, the devotee realizes the truth in full. So we have to go through the Brahma Jyoti in order to see the personal feature of the Lord, if we want to see the personal feature. Okay, go ahead, let's have somebody else read. Mary? Maharaj, can I ask one question, Maharaj? Okay. Like a devotee, a pure devotee of the Lord, does he need to go through the Brahma Jyoti also, or he goes direct to the Supreme Personality? Yeah, devotee does We don't give much attention to the Brahma Jyoti. 
because we know the Brahma Jyoti is one of Krishna's energies, it's coming from Krishna. We go, if we go to Krishna directly, then we will know everything also about Brahma Jyoti. I gave the example, if you have a hundred dollars, can you hear me okay? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj. If you, have a, if you have a hundred dollars, you also have fifty dollars, you also have ten dollars, it's all included. So one who knows Bhagavan, if we actually know Bhagavan, we will also know about Paramatma and about Brahman. Mm -hmm. So we don't give a lot of attention to the Brahma Jyoti. <laughs> We give our attention to Krishna, we worship Krishna. By worshipping Krishna, then we'll know everything about the Brahma Jyoti. Krishna will reveal everything we need to know. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that he is the basis of the Brahman. Brahmano hi pratistaham. We learn about the Brahman in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, whatever. We need to know, Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita. We don't need to go any other place, hear other places. We don't need to just focus only on the Brahman. We need to understand the nature of Brahman. Right? What is the nature of Brahman? Brahman realization is realization of what aspect of the Lord? Impersonal feature, Maharaj. Yeah, but. The, uh, what is the nature of the Lord's form? Is that feature? Light form. Eternal, eternal form. Yes, right. Realization of the Brahman is realization of the Sat feature, the eternal feature. Sat, of, yes. Right, eternal feature. So for the for the impersonalists, they sim they simply think Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahman. That is their meditation. But they do not have any activity. They don't do any, they have no function, they have no activity. They're just simply thinking, Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I am Brahman. There's no activity, there's no re relationship, there's no variety. You get very bored and you get very fed up and after some time then they come back to the material world and they come back to the material world and they will take up some material activity, some welfare activity. They may open a hospital, they may open the school for mundane education, like that. Because they do not know about spiritual activity. They're thinking ultimately in the Brahman, nothing, only the oneness, no activity. So they want to stop the activity. But in Krishna consciousness, we have activities here and we have activities in Goloka. In Goloka we're also chanting and we're also hearing and talking about Krishna, serving Krishna. Here in this world we're practicing, hearing and chanting and serving Krishna and when we go back to Godhead we will also continue to serve there. So that's a big difference, you see, between the impersonalists and the personalists. Okay, somebody can read now, Bhagavad, uh, who's, who's, Mary, you can read? Yes, Maharaj. In his Bhagavad Sandaba, Srila Jiva Goswami states, the complete conception of the Absolute Truth is realized in the Personality of Godhead because He is Almighty and possesses full transcendental potencies. The full potency of the Absolute Truth is not realized in the Brahma Jyoti. Therefore, Brahman realization is only partial realization of the personality of Godhead. O learned sages, the first syllable of the word Bhagavan Ba has two meanings. The first is one who fully maintains 
and the second is guardian. The second syllable ga means guide, leader or creator. The syllable one indicates that every being lives in him and that he also lives in every being. In other words, the transcendental sound Bhagawan represents infinite knowledge, potency, energy, opulence, strength and influence, all without a tinge of material in embryo. Thank you. Okay, so so we were we were discussing just before reading this about how realization of the Brahman is only partial realization of the, of the absolute truth, right? Mary, realization of Brahman, real, we realize what aspect? Uh, realization of Brahman, mm, there's, there's no spiritual service, it's only more to material service. Well, what, but what is their realization coming to the platform of Brahman? We just said, realize, we realize only the Sat feature, the eternal feature, that we're not the body, we're not the body, we're the soul. So that's as far as it goes. But if you ask them, what is the what is the function of the soul? What are you supposed to do? Is this, they don't they don't have any activity. No, they say all activity is Maya. Just stop everything. So they have only realization of Sat, and the yogi they realize a bit more than the the, the than the jnanis. The yogis they realize. What feature? Chit. Chit, right. Knowledge. They realize the Lord's everywhere, in every heart, in every living entity, like, like that. But they don't get the ananda. The yogis, the jnanis, they don't get the ananda. They don't get the pleasure which the devotees get from realizing the Bhagavan. So the devotee has full realization. But the jnanis and the yogis, they have only partial realization. So then Prabhupada quotes this about Jiva Goswami just analyzing the meaning of the word Bhagavan. Just like we read the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna speaks, it says, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. So Bhagavan, what is the meaning of this word Bhagavan? And Jiva Goswami has analyzed it, Bhagavan, and he explains the meaning of the three syllables. So, sometimes it's explained in a different way. Sometimes it's explained that Bhaga, Bhaga means opulences and Van means one who possesses. So, Bhagavan, one who possesses opulences. And those opulences were listed as six things, wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength and renunciation. So that, was, that definition was given by Parasaramuni, who was the father of Vyasadeva. But here Prabhupada chose to quote Jiva Goswami, one of the six Goswamis, and how Jiva Goswami explains the meaning of the word Bhagavan, right? So first of all, Ba means one who fully maintains and also the guardian. And Ga meaning the guide, the leader or creator. And Van meaning who indicates every living entity lives in him and he lives in every being. So in this way, describing the word Bhagavan, indicating the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, He is actually Bhagavan. Okay, someone else can read? Gandharvika Radharani Madhaji, can you read please?
Gandharvika Radharani, are you there today? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. The Lord fully maintains his unalloyed devotees and he guides them progressively on the path towards devotional perfection. As the leader of his devotees, he ultimately awards the desired result of devotional service by giving himself to them. The devotees of the Lord see the Lord eye to eye by his horse's mercy. Thus, the Lord helps his devotees reach the supermost spiritual planet, Goloka Vrindavan. Being the creator, he can bestow all necessary qualification upon his devotees so that they can ultimately reach him. The Lord is the cause of all causes. In other words, since there is nothing that caused him, he is the original cause. Consequently, he enjoys his own he enjoys his own self by manifesting his own eternal potency. The external potency is not exactly manifested by him, for he expands himself as the Purushas. And it is in these forms that he maintains the features of material manifestation. By such expansion, he creates, maintains, and and I, it's the cosmic manifestation. All right. So we're hearing, first of all, how the Lord has this very special care for his devotees. Krishna says in the Bhagavad, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he said, he's equal to everyone. But if someone renders service to me, then he is a friend, he is in me, and I am in him. So Krishna is describing he has a special relationship with his devotees. He has a special relationship with his devotees who do service. The Prabhupada said, this is natural. He just like a mother is kind to all children, but she will have a natural special affection for her own child. So in the same way, Krishna has a special affection for his devotees. The devotees see the Lord eye to eye by his mercy. And the Lord helps the devotees to come to Goloka Vrindavan. And he can, the Lord gives also the qualification for the devotees so that they can reach him. So without the Lord's mercy, we cannot go there to be with the Lord. We're dependent on his mercy. It's up to him. He's the real cause of all causes, right? We say he's Ishwara Paramakrishna. He's a, the supreme controller. So there's nothing separate from him, that he is not the cause. He is the original cause. He enjoys the self by manifesting his own internal potency. What do we mean, the internal potency? We hear the external potency, the internal potency. What is that? How does Krishna, he says, Krishna enjoys his own self by manifesting his own internal potency. What is this internal potency? Is it Radharani Maharaj? Srimati Radharani, yeah, could be. Anything else? Any what? Aladini, Aladini Shakti. Ladini Shakti, yes, that's Srimati Radharani, Ladini Shakti, yeah, the internal potency. In fact, the whole spiritual world is the Lord's internal potency. The spiritual world, particularly, of course, Goloka Vrindavan, with all the devotees, everything, that's all the internal potency of the Lord. So then the external potency, what is that? It's the material world. Yes, the material world, right. And Prabhupada said that the external potency is not manifested by him. 
because he so how does he manifest in the material world where does the external potency come from Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Maharaj? Huh? Is it Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva? Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, well, there, uh, yeah, it is in some way, but before that, before that, you see that they ha the, 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 material, the material world has to be created, has to be manifested. And who does it? How does he, ex how does he arrange for the material world to be manifested? Uh, from Mahavishnu or the three Yes, Vishnus? right, right. From first from Mahavishnu, the Purushas, right? The Purushas. Who are the Purushas? That's the Purusha avatars. The three Purusha avatars. Mahavishnu. And then the other one is who? Garbhadaya Vishnu. Garbhadaya Vishnu. And Shirodakashaya Vishnu, right. So these are the Purushas. So they expand. Remember Mahavishnu is laying in the Kajyo ocean and from his body what happens? What comes out of his body? Universe. Yeah, universes come out, right? Just like what? The sweat, sweat drops. Right, just like <laughs> drops of sweat come out of our body, yeah. And then what happens? The universes come out from Mahavishnu and then who goes into each universe? Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. Yeah, Garbhodakshaya Vishnu goes into each universe and he makes an ocean in the bottom of each universe. He lays down there and then what happens? That is huh? He's, he's laying in the, in the bottom of the Garbhodak ocean and then what happens? What begins to grow? Comes out from his navel. Lotus. Yeah, the, lo the lotus flower comes out from his navel and then who, who comes from the lotus flower? Brahma. Brahma, right. Okay, so the initial creation is done by Vishnu and then the secondary creation is taken up by Brahma. And who's the maintainer? Vishnu, Vishnu is the maintainer. Yeah, Shiro Dakashayi Vishnu and Garpo Dakashayi Vishnu also. And who is the destroyer? Shiva. Shiva. Yeah, Lord Shiva. Right, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva also helps sometimes, in, he helps in the beginning with the creation and sometimes he helps with to maintain, he will kill a demon. But his real work comes at the end when he has to do the annihilation. Okay. So who's going to read next? Madhu Tosi Madhaji. Madhuri Tosi. Yeah? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Um, the living entities are also different. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. The living entities are also differentiated expansions of the Lord's self. And because some of them desire to be lords and imitate the Supreme Lord, he allows them to enter into the cosmic creation with the option to fully utilize their propensity to lord it over nature. Because of the presence of his parts and parcels, the living entities, the entire phenomenal world is stirred into action and reaction. Thus, the living entities are given full facilities to lord it over nature material nature. But the ultimate controller is the Lord himself in his plenary feature as Paramatma, the super soul, who is one of the Purushas. Okay, so 
How did the creation come about? How, how did the living entity, why are the living entities taking their birth in the material world? Because they want to enjoy just like Lord. So, yes. they've fallen down. Yeah, they want to be like the Lord, right? They want to imitate. So Krishna gives that permission? Hmm? So the living entities are in the material world and because they're in the material world they're engaged in activities. They like to do activity. The nature of the soul is to be active. So whether we're in the spiritual world or the material world, we like activity. It's artificial to stop activities. So we come at the living entity takes birth in the material world and he begins to do activities. And Krishna gives facility. Do we have complete facility? Do we have full facility? We can do whatever we like? What do you say, Madhu Tausi? Are we given full facility? We can do whatever we like? As long as we have karmas, we, we are bind to karma, so we cannot do as we like. Yeah, right. We have minute independence. Yeah, we have minute independence, right. Who is the ultimate controller? You, Krishna. We will see when you study the Bhagavad Gita, when you come to study Bhagavad Gita, you'll see that there are there are five factors influencing every activity and ultimately the ultimate factor influencing every activity is the paramatma or the super soul so, so we have to we cannot act without the sanction of the paramatma so we get some facility we're given some some independence to, to lord over the material nature, but very limited. The real controller is Krishna in his form as a Paramatma. Okay. You want to read a bit more, Madhu Tosi Maharaj? Yes, Maharaj. Thus, there is a gulf of difference between the living entity, Atma, and the controlling Lord, Paramatma, the soul and the super soul. Paramatma is the controller and the Atma is the controlled. Therefore, they are in different categories. Because the Paramatma fully cooperates with the Atma, he is known as the constant companion of the living being. Yeah. The Paramatma and the Atma, they are compared to two birds in a tree. Just like the body is like the tree. And in the tree there are two birds. There is the Atma and the Paramatma. One bird is the witness and the other bird is eating the fruit. So which, which bird is a witness? Which bird is eating the fruit? Do you know? Paramatma is the witness and Atma is the, the one eating fruit. Right, yeah. So we're eating the fruit. Why? What are we trying to do? We are accumulating karmas. Yeah, we're trying to enjoy. Yeah, activities in this material we, world. We desire to enjoy. So, is, is the fruit always nice? It's dukkalayan, it's, it's full of miseries. 
Yes, some, sometimes the fruit is sweet, but often the fruit may be bitter and sour and like that, yeah. So as you see, our activities also sometimes a lot of pain, difficulty. So this is the situation. So the Paramatma, yes? Maharaj, Paramatma is witnessing whatever happening throughout many, many births. You know what happens to the, this soul? In many, many births, he knows everything that is happening. Yeah, we forget, right? We don't remember, but the Paramatma remembers. So when we take our next birth, the Paramatma reminds us about the last life and our desires. So he is a companion. He goes with us, life after life, with us. So he is the best friend, right? Good friend, always with us. And always trying to help us, giving us knowledge and remembrance and forgetfulness also. But he is the controller and we are controlled. Who are we controlled by? I said, he's the control. Is he actually controlling us? No, he, he gives us some independence, right? A little bit of independence. He is the controller. We are controlled. How are we controlled? By the material energy, by the modes of nature. We are controlled in that way. And he is the controller. Krishna, the Paramatma, he is the controller of the material nature. But we are controlled by the material nature. We think I'm free, but we are controlled by passion and ignorance and sometimes goodness. The three modes, the three gunas are controlling us. That way we are controlled. Okay. Tanusha Madhiji. Can you read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. The all-pervading feature of the Lord, which exists in all circumstances of waking and sleeping, as well as in potential states, and from which the Jeeva Shakti living force is generated as both conditioned and liberated soul, is known as Brahman. Since the Lord is the origin of both Bra uh, Paramatma and Brahman, He is the origin of of emotional service of the Lord. Such pure and fully cognizant devotees of the Lord are fully attached to Him in heart and soul, and whenever such devotees assemble, with similar devotees, they have no engagement but the glorification of the Lord's transcendental activities. Those who are not as perfect as the pure devotees, namely those who have realized only the Brahman or Paramatma features of the Lord, cannot appreciate the activities of the necessary knowledge within their hearts. Huh? And thus cannot appreciate the activities of cannot appreciate or cannot appreciate the activities of the perfect devotees. The Lord always helps the pure devotees by imparting necessary knowledge within their hearts and thus out of the, His special favour He dissipates all the darkness of ignorance. The speculative philosophers and yogis cannot imagine this because they more or less depend on their own strength. As stated in the Kada Upanishad 1.2.23, the Lord can be known only by those whom He favours and not by anyone else. Such special favours are bestowed upon His pure devotees only. Sri Isopanishad thus points to the favour of the Lord which is beyond the purview of the Brahma Jyoti. Okay, let's have a look at all this. So the all-pervading feature of the Lord. What is that all-pervading feature, Tanusha? Uh, he's 
his uh, spiritual activity <coughs> and form Maharaj? The all-pervading feature of the Lord which exists in all circumstances of waking and sleeping as well as in potential states. It is the Brahman. No, no, just the Brahman, the all-pervading feature of the Lord is the Brahman. We're hearing about the Brahman, the all-pervading feature. This is the Brahman. Right? And, and Prabhupada is describing it. It exists in all circumstances, in all potential states, and the Jiva Shakti is generated, both conditioned and liberated souls, is Brahman. Okay? So the Brahman, the source of these things. So the Lord is the origin of both Paramatma and Brahman. Everything comes from Krishna. Paramatma also comes from Krishna. Brahman also comes from Krishna. He is the origin of all living entities. All the living entities also come from Him. All else that exists, those who know this engage at once in the devotional service of the Lord. So, the one who knows how Krishna is the origin of everything, then they will want to serve Krishna. They want to do devotional service. So Prabhupada goes on to talk about pure devotees. Pure, fully cognizant devotees are attracted to him in heart and soul. The devotees, they have no engagement but to glorify the Lord's activities. Right? In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, Madjata madgata prana bodayantas parasparam katayantas tumam nityam tushyanti cha ramanti cha. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, they are surrendered unto me, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss, enlightening one another and conversing about me. So this is the business of devotees, enlightening one another, talking about Krishna. However, Prabhupada said, some people are not as perfect. They're not so realized. They've only understood Brahman or they've only understood Paramatma. They cannot appreciate the activities of the perfect devotees. Yeah, we see the yogis and the impersonalists, they cannot appreciate devotees. The Lord always helps a pure devotee by imparting knowledge within their hearts. And thus, out of His special favour, He dissipates all the darkness of ignorance. You see, Prabhupada is paraphrasing here from the Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Desham Ivanu Kampartam Aham Agyana Jam Tamasa Nashayami Atma Baba Sto Gyana Dipena Bashvataha. Krishna says, Out of compassion for them, I dwelling in their heart, destroy the darkness born of ignorance with the lamp of knowledge. So Krishna gives special favor to his devotees. He takes away the ignorance. He takes away the ignorance with the lamp of knowledge, by giving them knowledge within the heart. How do we get knowledge? Do you get knowledge from the heart also? Danusha, is Krishna inspiring you in the heart? Yes, Maharaj, as the Paramatma. He's giving you knowledge? Are you sure? Through, um, no, I'm not, not sure, Maharaj, but we can get knowledge through the Guru and Sastras. That's right, that's good, yes, right. We cannot just depend on the heart, right, because our heart is not so pure. So, as you say, we have to also hear 
from the Shastra and from the teachers, the spiritual teachers. Sadhu, Shastra and Guru. We, we cannot just simply depend on the heart. Some people say from the heart, Krishna told me it's okay for me to eat meat. Krishna told me it's okay, I don't need to chant Hare Krishna. I just need to work, make money. Krishna, you know, people say so many things from their heart. Krishna told me. We have to check with the sadhus, the shastra and guru. Don't just rely on the heart. That's important. But for the pure devotees, if, they're, if you're a very pure devotee, then you can hear from the heart. But still you have to check sadhu, shastra and guru. So people who are speculative philosophers means jnanis, they're called speculative philosophers. And yogis, they, they cannot imagine this, not, they don't believe that Krishna from the heart can help us. They try to do everything themselves by their own strength. We gave the example before. If you want to know who is your father, how will you find out? Tanusha, if you want to know who is your father, how do you find out who is your father? Uh, I will ask my mother Maharaj. Yes, you will ask your mother. But the yogi and the jnanis, they won't ask, the, how will they do it? They will, tr they will go to every man, are you my father? Are you my father? Are you? Like that. They try to do everything on their own. But you're intelligent, you would go to your mother. You go to the, we go to the scriptures, we go to the Vedas, and they tell us everything about the Father. But the jnanis and the yogis, they want to understand everything by their own self, by their own effort. But we get help from Krishna. Okay? So, special favours are bestowed upon pure devotees only. Only the pure devotees have to be pure in heart to get Krishna's mercy. If we're not pure, then we won't get Krishna's mercy. It's important to hear from Krishna. Okay, so Ishopanishad points out, points to the favour of the Lord who is beyond the purview of the Brahma Jyoti. So if you're only going to the Brahma Jyoti, you won't get Krishna's mercy. You have to go to the, the form of the Lord, to the person. Krishna is a person. So we don't just worship only his energy. Okay, any questions? Any questions on this mantra tonight? No questions? Okay, we'll go. Maharaj, can I ask uh, yes? uh, two questions? Yeah. Maharaj, I, I want to know what's the difference between a yogi and a mystic yogi, Maharaj. A yogi and a mystic yogi? Well, yogi, yes. there, there can be many different kinds of yogis, you see. There are different kinds of yogis. There's karma yogis, there's jnana yogis, there's bhakti yogis. So yogis could be anything, could be any different kind of yogi. Maybe a hatha yogi, maybe a nastanga yogi. But mystic yogis, mystic yogis, they're, what, they're more working, they're endeavouring to get the mystic powers, the yoga siddhis. They're trying to get the yoga siddhis. It's the mystic yogis, mystics. Mystics, they want to travel in space. They want to leave the body like that. Yeah? Yeah, the other, the other question is Maharaj. Yeah? I'm, I'm wondering. Uh, Maharaj, you know, uh, since all the, I mean, um, the, the individual atmas, like, uh, they wanted to enjoy uh, this material uh, world and then they want to lord it over the material nature like that. Okay, Maharaj, uh, this Jeevas, from where do they actually come? 
they come from the spiritual world or are they from uh, the material world or well we okay. have all the atmas all the souls all living entities we're all parts and parcels of krishna right we're all krishna's energy we're all the prakriti of krishna so we have come originally from Krishna, but we've come into the material world because we have some desire to lord over material nature. We have the desire to imitate Krishna. So, we... so Maharaj, uh, once we have uh, attained the Goluka Vrindavan, there's no chance of us coming back to the material world, right? That's right. Once you go to Goloka Vrindavan, one who goes there will never come back. Will never think of coming back. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, we'll just spend a little time reviewing this. Uh, this is the slideshow. Oh. Okay, remember nine, mantras 9 to 14, we talked about the absolute and the relative in terms of knowledge, right? Absolute and relative knowledge. How did we dis what are the two kinds of knowledge? Vidya and Abhidya. Okay. So how do we cultivate we're supposed to cultivate avidya also? Yes. How do we how do we cultivate avidya? Can you tell me how I cultivate avidya? What do I need to do? You balance your work and your Krishna consciousness um, together, so you. Okay. How do I balance? How do I balance my work in Krishna consciousness? So you get up early and you do mangala chant the holy name yeah. and then and then you go ahead and do your daily job so how do i cultiv um, cultivate the avidya how am i going to get the knowledge of avidya I mean, yes, go ahead. The four regulative principles. Yes. Cleanliness, truthfulness. Yeah. Doing austerity. Yeah. And just by being a devotee, we will learn to be clean, truthful. We. The example is there about the one man who he was a hunter and he was killing animals and then he met Narada Muni. So Narada Muni stopped him from killing the animals and he told him you should just sit and chant Hare Krishna. So before he'd been a hunter and he was killing the animals, very, he was very cruel. But after he started to chant and became a devotee, he wouldn't even stamp on little insects. When he saw little insects on the path, he would get down and sweep the insects out of the way. He wouldn't even stamp on them. So he became like that. He, be, he was so transformed, he changed. So the same way, if we practice Krishna consciousness, we will also naturally will become a better person, we will develop good qualities. 
right? What is the real point of education? What's the goal of education? To develop good character. Huh? What? I can't hear what all you're all saying. One person. Good character. Good character. Okay, yes, we want to develop good character, right? That's the real education, right? Somebody who's really educated, they'll have a very good character, right? Okay. Okay, we will stop here tonight. We can go back on tomorrow. We've got time. So we still got a couple of more lessons to go on, to finish. If you have any more questions, you look over everything. And if you have any questions, you bring them, because we only have a couple of more classes to finish. And if you have any questions, you can ask them before we finish the class. Okay? So we'll stop here tonight. Unless there's any question. Anybody has any question tonight? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Um, just going back to what we discussed a few minutes ago, the question that you arised was, has Krishna special attention to his devotees? And is that fair? Can I have an example from you, please? Oh, <laughs> an example of Krishna having special care for his devotees? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, well, we see Sudama, Sudama Vipra, the Brahmana, he went to Dwarka to see Krishna. So Krishna took care of him. He didn't ask Krishna for anything. But when he went home, he saw that, his, that everything was provided. His home had become very wonderful. And we see Draupadi. Draupadi was in great danger, but Krishna came in the form of her sari to save her from the danger, to protect her, because she called Krishna's name. And we saw, see also Maharaj Ambarish was attacked by Durvasa Muni. Durvasa Muni tried to create a demon to try to kill, to try to do great harm to Maharaj Ambarish. But Krishna protected Maharaj Ambarish and Durvasa had to run. Durvasa was in trouble. There are many, many examples how Krishna takes care of his devotees. The Pandavas were always in difficulty, but Krishna protected them, protected Bhima from the poison cake, and the Pandavas were, were put in the house of burning, the, the house was set on fire because it was made of shellac. In the night, in the middle of the night, the house was set on fire, but the Pandavas were saved by the grace of Krishna. So many examples. Krishna saves the devotee, protects the devotee. Um, Maharaj, this all becomes fair because they are pure devotees. Is that right? Yes, well, it's Krishna's special love for his pure devotee. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. And we see also, you know, there's examples like Maharaj Parikshit. He got cursed, and he had, you know, he got cursed to die in seven days. So, Krishna came to him in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam, because yeah. he had to prepare for death. So he had to hear, yeah. the, he was able to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna sent Sukadeva Goswami to, to speak to him. And in this way, he could leave the world. Yeah? Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, anybody else has a question tonight? No? Okay. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.